Ah, hello there, and how are you doing today? Oh, I am so happy to hear it. And so am I, still alive, still well, still in quarantine and lockdown. It's been 49 weeks. Can you believe it? But I am now on a list and in a queue to get an appointment to get a vaccination. There's progress for you. Ha! Not sure where I am on which list and which queue, but it will happen sooner or later. <laughs> I hope that you've been getting your vaccinations and that you are fine. Now, where am I going to escape to, you ask? Good question. Well, Mr. Lambert was one of the people who subscribes to the channel and he gave me the challenge. He wanted me to fly from London Heathrow to Newcastle. Hmm. Now, London is E-G-L-L. -L. That's London Heathrow, a very, very busy airport. Newcastle is E-G-N-T. Not quite so busy, but it's on the coast of the North Sea and... Hmm. Is prone to some very strong winds coming off that sea so we shall have to see so first of all we need to go and have a look at the weather so if you're ready let's have a look at windy.com shall we windy.com and here we are at EGLL this is the location of London Heathrow and if you look at that wind, only six knots, but it's definitely a nice strong wind and it's coming from the west. So in all likelihood, we'll be departing on runway 27 left. Here's our destination, Newcastle. The winds are quite a bit stronger here. And according to this, they're gusting to 28 knots. So coming strongly from the west, 18 knots and gusting to 28 knots. Hmm, that's going to make for an interesting landing. As you can see, there's only one runway here at Newcastle. So we will be making our approach and landing on runway 25. Now, let's have a look at the Sim brief. We need to make our flight plan here. So, there you have the basic information. We are Ryanair. We are flight 186. We're departing EGLL and arriving at EGNT, or being well. For an alternate, we have EGCC. Now, that's Manchester, just in case you weren't aware. Our aircraft is a B737-800, we are Ryanair. And that's, by the way, is our registration number, the Echo India, Echo November India. The cruise profile is six. The scheduled flight time is one hour, 20 minutes, according to this. Well, we'll have to see. Departure runway 27 left, arriving on runway 25. We are full of passengers, 184 actually. Cargo is two tons. And here is the flight plan that Simbrief has produced for us. Very straightforward. Now, that information right there is what we will need to put into the FMC when we do the programming. And there is a map of our route going from EGLL in the south to EGNT in the north, 
with EGCC Manchester as our alternate. So we're happy with that. So we will save it and export the flight plan out. Let's see what the briefing package produces for us. Ah, there we go. Everything is there. Ah, our cruising altitude today is going to be flight level 280. The block time is 1 hour 17 minutes. The air time is 49 minutes. The block fuel that we're going to need is 5,416 kilograms. And there's our routing information. We'll see that again when we go to program the FMC. And we're using the current air act cycle of 2102. And there is our route once again. Now, some of the things that we have to contend with, of course, is the weather. And here you can see that there is a distinct weather front that we are going to have to cross. And there's the wind pattern for our flight. As you can see, it's basically from the west until we get up to about York, and then it changes and comes from the north, and then it changes again when we get up to Newcastle coming from the west again. Here's the profile of our flight, showing our cruising altitude at 28,000 feet. We shouldn't do too bad for a tailwind for most of the way, here we are. This is the airport at London Heathrow. And that is where we are parked. Stand 541 in the Terminal 5 area. There's a closer look at where the parking stand is, but we're close to the runway. Now, our departure is going to be the Umlag 1G. And this is the route that is taken. Now, we're going to be on the bottom departure. So we'll be on the Umlag 1G, which is departure from runway 27 left. When we get close to Newcastle, we'll be at our fix of POL. That's Pole Hill, by the way. And then we'll be taking... Gokov and XODRU to make our approach to the NDB. Then, when we get to the Newcastle NDB, as you can see here, is at 352 frequency, then we will be taking 87 degrees from that point to make our actual approach on a left base approach onto the runway. We are category C, so we'll be 87 degrees until we sweep on and make our final approach to the runway, which will then be 246 degrees, and we'll be intercepting the ILS now, providing that we don't crash and we do manage to land, the runway is 7,641 feet long. And we will be using most of that to make our landing. And we will be exiting at this exit right here, going along that little taxiway and the plan is that we will be parking at stand number four in Newcastle. So there's our plan. Got everything set? Got your compass? Got your bags? Got your charts? We're all set to go. So let's climb on board a Ryanair 186 and take to the skies. Ah, there you are. Come on in. Take your seat, why don't you? Nobody's occupying it today. 
I've not heard the doorbell go, so it looks like we may be the only ones flying today. And what are we flying? Ryanair 186. Now, this is a flight requested by Mr. Lambert, who wanted us to fly between London Heathrow and Newcastle, up in the north of England. Heathrow letters are Echo Golf Lima Lima. Newcastle is Echo Golf November Tango. We're here at London Heathrow and we're at stand 541, which is in the um, Terminal 5 area. We are full with 184 souls on board. And we have two tons of cargo in the hold. So here we go then. Let's get ourselves started. And you remember how to do this? Turn on the battery. Turn on the fuel. And then start the APU, the auxiliary power unit. The APU is located in the tail of the aircraft, in case you wondered. And what it does is it generates electricity so that we can run the entire aircraft on 115 volts, because all we have right now is 24. It also, when needed, it is a terrific compressor, because when it's needed to start the main engines, the air compressor, instead of forcing air into the main cabin, you know, coming through the overhead vents, instead it goes directly to the engine to spin those huge turbine engines and get them started. So that's what will happen at that point. Now, there it is. Good. We now have 115 volts showing up here on the voltmeter. So, galley on, emergency exit lights, no smoking, fasten seat belt, the forward service hatch is open and the air stairs are down for passengers to climb on board. There's the window heat, there's the probes, and there's the electrical pumps. That's the APU bleed just going on. And now we'll turn on the air. Can you hear it? That air is now blowing into the main cabin to keep it at a good temperature. Okay, looking good so far. No flashing lights, always a good thing, isn't it? Now, we will be following British Airways flight BA1326. 1326, that's our route. Next thing we need to do is we need to put in our position. So that's where we're going to start the programming. So E, G, L, L, and we're at 541, and now we'll make sure that the IRS, the, that's the GPS localization for the aircraft, are turned on, and we will have a look at our parking stand coordinates. Now according to the parking stand coordinates, stand 541 should be north 51 28.1 and west 0 28.8. And there it is. So what we'll do is we'll put that into the temporary and then load it in. We have now look, located ourselves on the Earth's surface. Now we go to the route 
Our starting point is EGLL. Our destination is EGMT. Our flight number is Ryanair, our YR186. And now we'll go down to page two, and this is where we're going to put in our flight plan. As you can see, we are scheduled to take off from runway 27 left on the Umlat 1G departure. So the first place that we'll be going to is Umlat. So we'll put that in. U M L A T. And we're going to go directly there. Then we're going to go on Tango 418. So Tango 418. And we're going to go to Wellin. So W E. L I N uh, Well in we're going to go on Tango four twenty and we're going to go to A K U P A. Now we're going to take Uniform Yankee 250. Until we get to Rimto. And that is our flight plan. So activate. And we've got that done. Now what we'll do at this point is we'll go in and we will the fix and that is EGNT is where we're going and we want four mile, ten mile and thirty mile radius. Go to the descent Go to the forecast and now we'll put in the wind speeds for these three elevations. The altimeter for Newcastle is 1022. And putting in the descent information it is 276 and 24. Three o four and fifteen, and two seventy four, twenty three. And we will execute that. Go to the departure. Now, before we put that in, let's get it confirmed from the tower that that is going to be where we will be taking off. So, let's contact the Heathrow ground on 121.7. So 121.7 121 and we're going to depart going to the north. Heathrow ground, Ryanair 186 with hotel request taxi for takeoff north departure. Ryanair 186 taxi to and hold short of runway 27 left using taxiway Charlie Bravo Lima 28 November Bravo 1 contact tower on 118.7 when ready. Taxi to and hold short runway 27 left using taxiway Charlie Bravo Lima 28 November Bravo 1 Ryanair 186. Well, as we thought, it is 27 left, and 
we're going to be on the Omelette 1G departure. There we go. And then the arrivals will be coming in on ILS 25. We're coming in on the Rim 21 North. Our transition is NT1. Now we'll go to the legs. And we'll go through this looking for root discontinuities. And that looks like we have a good a good route there. Now we can perform the performance initialization and reserves plus the trip and taxi is four point seven. Close enough. Four point seven. The reserves are 2.4, cost index is 6, and according to the flight plan we're at 280 today, that's our cruising altitude, and the average wind is 224 at 63. Okay, go to the N1. It's a long runway, so we'll do flaps five. Okay, so now we'll put in that information. 147 into here. We're going to presume our clearance will take us up to the cruising altitude of 28,000 feet. And we'll put 28,000 feet in here for our cruising altitude. This is for pressurization and the Navigraph charts tell us that the runway elevation Oh, the airport elevation is 266, so we will put in 250 here because that's the nearest point. And that, of course, is for pressurization. And we'll put on the navigation lights. Well, if we're departing on 27 left, we need to be at 270 degrees for departure. That will be our heading. Okay, let's check and see whether the flight plan... We have two green lights. We are set. So we'll lock that in. All right. If you're ready now, we'll get ourselves going. So we'll put the yaw damper on. Check everything across the board is good. We'll close up the hatch and bring up the stairs. The lights are off. Everything is set. So. We'll turn on the TCAS and now we need to request a pushback. So, everybody set? 
Okay, we'll let the crew know and we'll ask the ground crew to give us a pushback. Cockpit to ground. Go ahead. We've been cleared for push and start, tail to the right. Copy that, ready for push, tail right. Please bring red please. Brakes released. Turning off the air now into the cabin so we've got more pressure. Released. Here we go. All right, now we're going to start engine number two today, so we'll click on to that. And then over here we're looking for, as you can see, the start valve is opened on that. And it's starting to build up. On this we're looking for 24. And when 24 gets there, we will introduce fuel. There's 24. Now we can let the fuel flow in. And things are looking good. Yep, the oil, low oil pressure has come down, so that's clear. Ah, there's the engines that have ignited. And now we'll start engine number one. Push back complete. Parking brake, please. Parking brake is on. Brake set. Again, looking for. 24 on this, making sure that everything is looking good on that. Alright, steering pin is disconnected. Watch for slip release and guidance on your left. Have a good flight. Thank you. have a good burn on that. Both engines have started. Everything looks good. So we'll turn the auto brake into on. We'll go to flaps 5. And now that we have power coming in on both engines, we will switch to the main engines. Turn the air conditioning back on and then turn off the APU. We are now running on electricity generated by the main engines. Nothing is flashing. Ah, things are looking up. Alright, we'll turn on our taxi lights. Alert the crew that we're about to move. So, have a good look around. We're going to go out there to the taxiway, turn left and go all the way down to the active runway. So let's give a little bit of a boost to get ourselves unstuck. By the way, this is a very dense airport scenery. And uh, I'm showing 18 frames per second with all of the weather and all of the high definition scenery that we have here. So that's for you that want to know about such things. Everything looks clear. Now we're in 20 frames per second.
this is a very busy airport so we're going to have to keep our eyes open for traffic detailed airport this very detailed in the now as you know I have two computers running this entire system one computer over there is running all of this and of course the graphics are set to nominal so that I can get the screens the other computer is located down there and it is running these three huge, magnificent, very detailed screens. But I'm also running the scenery with maximum detail that I can. So getting 19 on the frame rate is very good very good indeed. To think that what I used to get was maybe about seven or eight when I was having one computer to run everything. That aircraft that is sitting stationary directly ahead of us is the British Airways Concorde. Maybe number two to depart today. Ryanair 186 ready for north departure at runway 27 left. 
position making sure that there's nobody coming in on final
10,000 feet, we can turn off the lights. We're already on standard barometric pressure.
thousand feet. Boston seatbelt sign. Crew can start to clean up.
coming up on the fix over Newcastle. The NDB, at which point we'll be turning to the right and making our left approach to come in to or runway 25. That's the standard procedure for arrivals into Newcastle. our speed and make sure that we have good flaps at the appropriate time. So everything is checking out.
intended secure for landing. Flaps are down, gear is down, and we have three green lights. to stand for. Right at 186, turn next taxiway.
go. Here's four. is looking good there. Right, stairs and hatch are open. Well, there you are. We landed and we didn't crash. Amazing. Well, Join us on the next flight, if you will. See you.